we're talking about Koalas, which is basically an open source project to expose the Pandas API to execute code on Spark clusters, on Apache Spark clusters. Okay. So a lot of terms just came, came about. Uh, pandas, uh, so Jim we actually gave us a brief introduction on on pandas and some of the issues that uh, could be caused by it. Uh, namely, we get, uh, it is single threaded, it is memory bound, but nevertheless, it's a very, very popular uh, framework for slicing and dicing your data in Python. So often, data scientists, they might spend three fourths of the time in pandas, and then the other uh, quarter of the time in scikit-learn doing the actual machine learning, right? So bulk of their work winds up being in just slicing and dicing with that, or structured. Um, and now Koalas is uh, an open source project, uh, initially developed by Databricks, open source in April of last year, um, to basically take the same API the Pandas provides, but basically have, uh, have, it, have, a, have that be a wrapper for the Apache Spark APIs. And Spark, as, as you may well know, is the, is the big data distributed uh, in-memory engine that, uh, that became so popular. It's, it got started about 10 years ago. Okay. Um, so where are the goals? The goal is really to, to make pandas big data ready. Yeah. Again, this is um, the issues being the pandas right now is single threaded and memory bound. Right. It's really just meant to be on single machine, single, single processor. Uh, while on the other hand, Spark, which leverages a cluster of, of machines, is fully distributed in terms of the compute and the memory. So when you actually read a data set into Spark, it goes ahead and distributes, uh, partitions the data across all these, these workers. Right? And from then on, all the computation is done in a parallelized fashion. Yeah. And this comes out of the box. Um, so, um, right, as I mentioned, uh, the, the Qualys package was open source in April of 2019. Now we're seeing, I think this, this, this slide is a bit out of date, uh, it's around 8,000 daily downloads uh, for, this, uh, for this package. It's available via you know, pip, you can pip install Qualys. Um, and um, yeah, architecturally, it's really just a lean API layer sitting on top of Spark itself, right? It's just that the, the notation um, and the API specifications have been adopted from patents. That's really it, right? Um, so, um, a few design principles. Um, one is to be Pythonic. Spark itself, for example, uses camel case. Everything's camel case. To be Pythonic is to be snake case, right? So, of course, uh, Qualys is, is going to adopt the snake case uh, uh, function, uh, uh, this uh, notation, right? Um, everything is NumPy friendly. Uh, you can import, export, in, out. Yeah, NumPy is very much integrated uh, within Qualys. And the documentation uh, is in the uh, PyData style. Okay? So, um, Really, we're trying to have callless functions and pandas functions be identical. So they have the same naming, naming conventions, same functionality, and uh, basically anything that's found to be distributable, parallelizable, within the pandas API is taken over and adopted in the uh, callless project. Okay. Um, a few few notes here um, on. on Guardrails really on safety. So um, pandas is uh, Qualys is meant to be just perform at scale, right? So if there are any functions, any processes which cannot be distributed, which cannot be executed at scale, are left alone. So you can now be you can be rest uh, uh, assured that anything you do in Qualys is going to be paralyzed, right? And it's going to scale scale to Petabytes. I'll give an example of, a, um, of one group uh, that's, that's using Koalas 
that is the pandas API to process uh, around a, a petabyte of data. Okay. Um, a few exceptions, things that aren't paralyzable and that can be dangerous, are these these uh, these two um, castings really taking your qualys data frame and casting it over to a pandas data frame or a numpy array. These two actually wind up pulling everything from your workers into your driver, and there's potential there to kill your driver if you get out of memory. Yeah. So just as with uh, data frames that collect for you uh, Spark gurus, yeah. careful. Don't do this in production. Yes. Do not. Um, so I think yeah, few differences between now. Uh, we talked about pandas and uh, and PySpark. Um, pandas is um, it is you know it's uh, comes with everything out of the box. Um, type system is based is based on NumPy and of course it's very Pythonic. PySpark itself. So this is the the Spark. Uh, API for uh, excuse me the Python API for Spark um, has it's, it's, it's kind of a, has some primitive compositions has some abstractions up top um, its its type system is from NC SQL yeah and uh, underneath it's actually running the Scala data frames APIs it's calling those those APIs. A uh, few differences between a pandas data frame and a Spark data frame. Okay, um, so you know one difference on on the on the pandas side, data frames are, are somewhat mutable. On the Spark side, they're completely immutable. Uh, and the rest actually is just a um, so just a, a demonstration of writing or, or performing the same task. Right. Uh, one thing that's really that's really popular is this value count. It's basically a group by then count. It's such a common task that pandas has this value counts function, just does it for you. In PySpark, you gotta do that argument. Which is fine. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but the trouble is, if you want to, if, if you already have a pipeline already written in pandas, and your data volume has grown to the point that Pandas is no longer the appropriate solution, you need to move over to Spark. And prior to Qualys, you would have had to basically do a rewrite. You would have to take this little snippet and expand it out to that, right? And do this line by line. So it's just a very time consuming task, right? Um, so give me an example. Another example here. This is a very, very simple one. We're going to, on the panda side on the left, we're going to import, we're going to read some data, a CSV file, right? Uh, we're going to change its uh, column names to x, y, and z1. And we're going to create a new column called x2, which is the product of the x column by itself. Yeah, x squared. Okay. On the PySpark side, you have to do a Spark read, add a few options, then the CSV, great. You want to change names, you have to do this to data frame XYZ. You want to add a new column, you have to do this with column X2. Okay? Now, now we introduce qualis. Okay? This is now the same thing that we just did in PySpark. So everything that you see here on the right actually gets mapped to the previous PySpark file. And as you can see, basically, the only difference here is that import uh, statement at the very top. So in fact, if uh, the project continues to advance at the pace that it is, you will soon be able to just take your pandas script at the very top. Instead of saying import pandas as pd, you would say import koalas as pd. So, and then you don't even have to change your PDs anyway. That's it. You, you literally change the top line, and suddenly you went, you took your workload from a single threaded, memory bound framework to a fully distributed one. Okay. Um, all right. Demo time. It's the fun part. So, I have a Spark cluster going live. Uh, 
on Azure Databricks by May. Here we go. Here's my little cluster. It's actually very little. It has a single worker. I have Koala's installed. Right? I, I just actually I pulled in from the PyPy repository. Okay. And let me jump to my notebook. Okay. Here we go. So this is the Databricks notebook. Very similar to Jupyter for those familiar. Okay. So I'm going to import a few things. Uh, pandas, NumPy, and, uh, and Koalas itself. Okay. Let's go. Good, good, good. Um, let's let's do just a, let's make make a Koala series. So I'll go go through a bunch of types and castings of one type of data frame to another. Yeah. So this is a series, great. So um, just as pandas has series, koalas has series as well. Okay. Let's get the type type system out of there. Should be in this in a second. Uh, next up, that series, that's sort of the, the basic uh, element. Um, soon after, so here we go, that's our series. Now I'm going to do something different. I'm going to create a Koala's data frame. So this is how you would do it in Pandas as well. And if you see, once you do do that, it'll actually tell us, yeah. yeah. So this is a random Spark job. Yeah, here's the data. Great. Now, PD, I'm going to create, I'm going to use Pandas here to create a date range. Fine. I'll save that for later. And I'm also going to use pandas to create a pandas data frame. So that's PDF. Okay, that's pandas data frame. Now, do a cast. From, so we're doing koalas, from, a pan, from pandas, this type of pandas data frame that we just, just built, and basically doing a cast from pandas data frame to koalas data frame. Done, and if I wanted to, I can display it. It'll actually start a Spark job, right? So this Spark, this did a Spark job. The Panda side did not. So this actually ran on the driver of the cluster. Uh, this ran on the workers. This one is fully distributed. The first one was just single threaded on the driver. Yeah, but same thing, same results, right? Okay. Um, I can do something else too. I can take the pandas data frame and cast it over to a Spark one. Yeah. So you can actually do, you can go back and forth between Spark, pandas, Koala's data frames, interchangeable, depending on what you're on what you're trying to do. Okay. Now, yeah, I'm going from Spark data frame to a Koala's one. Again, this can be fully distributed. You can see a Spark job come up. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Let's do some fun stuff. Uh, a little bit of types. Um, okay, so we have that qual that Qualys data frame. I'm gonna do a head on it. Now I'm gonna run a bunch of standard uh, pandas calls, like head. You see them. So those those familiar with pandas should find all these calls very uh, very common. You know, you probably use, you probably use them every day. You know, I'm gonna take a look at the index of this little the dummy the, the data set that we put together. Columns. And I'm gonna cast it to a NumPy array. This, by the way, is, is dangerous. This is taking data from the cluster and bring it to the driver. Careful. So this is one of the few exceptions that have exceptions to, to watch out for, right? Um, so Pandas has this function called describe. It's basically a, a statistical summary of your data set. Qualys does too, except that now it does it on a Spark job, right? Now we have our count, min, max, uh, standard deviations, quantiles, right? Um, so you can imagine doing all this a one liner on terabytes of data and getting the statistical summaries, right? Transpose, again, these are all pa pandas um, calls. Transpose are, you know, do a quick sort. Sorting by uh, specific value, that will sort by index, sort by specific column. Yeah. I'm dealing with missing, missing data. So I'm going to take my 
pandas data frame. I'm going to add a new column E to it, plus a bunch of, yeah, so we add some dates. We can use the index of our dates that we generated a second ago. Um, I'm going to add a new column. Right now, that column E is a bunch of NANs, nulls. And for a couple of these entries, we're going to add the value of 1 to it. Maybe I can actually print this guy. PDF 1. OK, there we go. So here's our new pandas data frame. Has a bunch of dates as the index. Five columns. This E1 has now two missing values. Um, I'm going to cast that to, of course, a koalas data frame. Now it's a Spark job. Still the same thing. But now it's just running on Spark. Yeah. Um, and then you still get to use all of these standard Python, the pandas tools for handling missing values, like drop NA. Yeah. There we go. And yeah, so basically, drop NA drops any row which has an NA in it. In this case, how far rows had NAs. So it's that. Uh, filling missing data, we take that uh, the data frame, and anytime it sees an, uh, an NAN, it's going to stamp it with a 5. So let's do that. Got a mark 5. Great. Okay. Um, statistical work, I think we already saw, saw some of this earlier. Then it's part configuration. So um, in the back, um, you can leverage Arrow for serializing and deserializing your uh, Python calls. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is actually do two things. First, I'm going to run a very simple job here with Arrow enabled. Basically, I'm going to create the range of 300,000. Yeah. So 0 to uh, 300,000 minus 1. Yeah, I'm gonna, and then I'm going to cast that to pandas. And I'm going to run the exact same. I'm, we'll time this all. Yeah, we'll time it. And I'm going to run the same thing with arrow disabled. Yeah, and we'll see the difference here. OK. So there it is. Uh, creating this. This is actually all that worked on on Spark. So it took around roughly one third of a second. Here we go with arrow disabled. I'm going to step back for a second because it's more slow. Hang it down, get your coffee. Yeah. So 1.1, uh, so maybe four times slow. Okay. I mean, enable arrow again. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Okay, groupings, this is the data, the um, common task within, uh, within pandas, slicing, dicing, grouping, right? Um, again, let's, let's create a Koala's data frame, a bunch of random numbers in there too, all right? So four columns here, uh, A is a bunch of foobars, B is one, two, threes, string, C and D are normally distributed uh, random numbers. Okay, it's grouped by A, get it sum. Yeah, this is again, everything now is this is all pandas API calls, right? In, so, uh, group by two columns, get their sum. Good, good, good. Very common task within, within pandas. Plotting as well, I'm gonna import a good old matplotlib. Yeah, thank you, John Hunter. And I'm creating a new data set. This is going to be a pandas data frame. Um, four columns of random numbers, 1,000 rows each. Okay, I'm going to cast that to a Koala's data frame. Okay, you can actually print this out if you want. Let's do that. KDF. Yeah. So just a bunch of normal distributed random numbers. Thousand rows. Great. Whoops, shouldn't have done that maybe. Bad idea. Yeah. 
That was a bad idea. Never mind. <laughs> Um, let's take the cumulative sum, right? And I want to plot, the, plot this cumulative sum using Matplotlib. There we go. Um, again, everything here that we're doing is in the back a spark job. Okay. I know you have a standard stuff, you know, reading, writing. So I'm gonna take that uh, quality data frame that that we just gen generated. Um, Oh, excuse me. I'm going to take the CSV file I have lying around. Um, was that a friend to a CSV? And I'm going to take that and read it back. So it's a write a CSV file and then read the CSV file back again. Okay. Right. Other other data formats supported here are Parquet. Delta is also supported, the Delta format, and even uh, ORC. So, um, regardless of what your what format your data has been written in, uh, you can now actually do all your I/O activity with uh, with Qualys. Okay, and um, so if you like, um, there's a great post. On the Databricks blog, um, if you just to Google it, hours, two minutes, follow us. We have a, uh, one Databricks customer that's processing around a, a petabyte of data using the Pandas API, uh, which, is, which is pretty wild. And of course, um, if you want to contribute, please, uh, github.com slash Databricks slash Qualys is the repo. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm Ben Zeregi. Find me on LinkedIn, tw uh, Twitter, at and GitHub uh, with the Ben Zeregi handle. And I have all the slides and demos posted on GitHub. So again, uh, GitHub slash Ben Zeregi. You'll see a repo called Boss Asia 2020. Thank you very much. Oh, does anyone have any questions? So you said the API is the same, right? If I have my my pandas uh, script, uh, no, import pandas as a key, can I just switch that into Qualys and it will work? That's that's ultimately the goal. Yes, yes. So right now there there might be a few methods that aren't haven't yet been mapped over. Um, so yeah, but all the really popular ones, common ones, yeah. have been done. So there's a good chance that you can just do change your import line and let the rest run. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a bit of a question about like the pandas and the and qualis. Because recent because it's quite recent that pandas actually broke on to pandas one and there were actually a lot of changes to the APIs, a lot of deprecation, some functions that used to work in the zero zero two five stopped working the way it that people thought. Then like so how does the qualis uh, how does the qualis project actually keep Update with pandas. We are we're, we're sticking with we're following uh, one, version one point zero forward, so we're not actually going to support some of the uh, older versions. And that was that was a great move uh, by the pandas community to finally, after I don't know how many years, to release one point zero, uh, because then that that meant that the, the API is now stable, right? They're not going to break API till pandas two, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, it's just it's just basically optimizations or additions to the existing API, but they're not going to break API for a long time. Mm -hmm. So that was the go ahead for us to to come in and um, say that yes, Qualys is going to go and uh, uh, support Pandas one, one one plus. Very good question. Thank you. How do you handle that uh, major the dangerous functions? Only use those in, in depth test. No, no, and, and carefully. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> but is there a way to mistakes will happen? Yes. So how do you uh, from a Qualys perspective? Yes. So what you can do something or we're talking about say dragons or something. 
Yeah, you're talking about we're, we're talking about these two functions: yeah. data frame to pandas and yeah. to numpy. Yeah. Um, so these, you you only, do you often do these just to, just to see what your data looks like in, in the pandas world and the numpy world. So what we can do is before doing the call to pandas or to numpy, is downsample your data. It's a call to sample, say, one percent. Of all the data distributed across okay, my smartphone, it should be done by more of us. No, this is done by you. No, no, no. We don't want to. We're not going to enforce any down sampling by default. That's that's uh, and that's why these these two are. It's really just these two that are that are dangerous. There's a third one about collect, but that's and that's a, just dangerous for the smartphone. But honestly, like, I rarely find myself using these, even even during demo tests. But yeah, I just yeah. demoed them just There's to show. The challenge with some of these is uh, there'll be somebody who didn't read the documentation in doing anything. Yeah. And went ahead with it and, and uh, it blew up. Yeah, it blew up, and it's a, they'll, they'll learn quickly. <laughs> it shouldn't be production. Hopefully. It should, yeah, yeah. Yeah, these these these, uh, these should never be in production. Uh, are there any other questions? No? All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you, you very much. Thank you, everyone, online.